Our scripture reading this morning comes from the third chapter of Colossians, verses 12 through 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ dwell in your hearts. Indeed, you were called to be one body. Be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God, the Father, through him. May God bless the reading and the hearing of God's word. <clears throat> An imaginary store on a street lined with shops beckons me with the sign, Christian Clothing, on sale. Upon entering, I can see that this is no ordinary store, for the garments are not arranged by size, but rather by categories of virtue. I come first to a rack labeled Compassion. Instantly, a sales lady appears by my side. She plucks a blouse from a hanger and holds it out to me. The fabric is beautiful beyond compare. I have never seen such a swirl of colors. I could wear this blouse of Compassion very happily, I think. Eagerly, I duck into the dressing room and try it on. It is so beautiful. I don't even look at the price tag. Next, I find a jacket labeled kindness. I have, you have never felt such a soft material. Would that the whole world could be dressed in such softness. But as much as I love that jacket, I had to admit it didn't fit me very well. I was beginning to put it back when the sales lady encouraged me. Don't worry, if you wear it often, you will grow into it. It will soon fit you well. At the next rack, she showed me a skirt of meekness with a matching scarf of humility. The colors were quite drab and I didn't think they suited me at all. But she insisted they were just the thing to complete the outfit. The final touch was a pair of boots labeled patience. They were beautifully made. And they felt good on my feet. But I had to wonder, would they last? Or would they shine and fade at the first sign of bad weather? I tried on the whole outfit. in the mirror. It looked so marvelous, I decided to wear it home. But something was missing. Ah, here's the sales lady again with the red hat. And above all these, clothe yourself with love, she said with a smile. The hat of love was the crowning touch. I smiled back to see myself looking so good in the mirror. <clears throat> I decided to wear it home. At the cash register, I was pleasantly surprised at the cost of the garments. They had been paid for by Christ, she said. All he asks is that you live up to the labels. Whenever you wear those clothes, practice compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, and love. Heading out the door,
door, I felt I had gotten off quite lightly. But as soon as I hit the street, I began to feel uncomfortable. Right after I passed a homeless man and pretended not to see him, the blouse of compassion began to pinch at my neck, and the jacket of kindness seemed far too big once again. Later on in the day, when I spoke sharply to my daughter, I noticed that the boots of patience had a mud spot on them. I wore the new clothes all week long, noticing where each pinch or seemed loose. It made me think, is this how I appear to the world? Wearing the clothes and saying the words of a Christian, but not quite acting the part, not quite living up to the label. I resolved to do better, to keep on wearing them until they fit. I resolved to keep acting with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, and love until these virtues became automatic. It reminded me of the business axiom. Wear the, wear, dress for the position to which you aspire. I wanted to be a Christian, and I would dress and act the part until I succeeded. The truth of the matter struck me one night as I was taking off my new clothes and hanging them up to wear again. I could try and succeed or try and fail. Either way, God's great love in Jesus Christ would be there inside me, no matter what I wore or what deeds I performed. The change was more than external. Inside, I had changed as well. The peace of Christ had entered my heart. The word of Christ had become my rule of life, my inner compass. I knew myself as a holy child of God, chosen and loved. God put on flesh so that flesh could put on God. Oops. This, was a, this, this sermon was originally written to be done as a two-part reading, and the first time I did it, it was kind of last minute at the church I was at, and that's what the pastor and I did. We did a two-part reading with the part that I just did interposed with some other paragraphs. Um, when I'm doing this dramatic monologue, I don't like to be interrupted like that. I kind of, kind of lose my place there for a while. Um, so I would like to share with you the rest of what, this, um, the rest of what was written about this um, content. The journey for Christ was a long one. The word existed before the creation of the world, entirely outside of the accounting by which we record years and centuries. The word was not a thing you could touch, for it existed beyond space, forever and everywhere. Christ and God were together. The word, the spirit, the breath of creation, and then the process began. Word became flesh. Christ began to put on the garments of humanity, First bone and muscle and skin, then blood and womb of woman, then infant cry and neediness, swaddling clothes and hay, arms of parents. In time, measured by months and years, he wore the garments of a Nazareth villager, the carpenter's apron, the teacher, and he took on the names of rabbi and messiah. In time, he suffered shame and betrayal and death on a cross. And on the third day, he rose again, dressed once more in the garments of divine glory, but triumphantly human still. God put on flesh so that flesh could put on God. Jesus' garments of flesh and fabric concealed his true nature for a while, but the radiance of his spirit shone through the garments. It was the combination of clothing and nakedness, of power and vulnerability that drew people to him. They resolved to imitate his actions, but they also were drawn by his stillness just to rest in his presence, just to receive the love he offered, brought them healing, brought them back to themselves. The Christian life consists of this, to be clothed in the deeds of righteousness, even while we claim the essential goodness that is already inside us. Jesus took on human form to show us that each one of us is chosen and loved by God. Our actions for good or ill cannot change that. So let us clothe ourselves in garments of righteousness, but also remember who we are underneath. We belong to God, 
who knows all our blemishes and deformities, and who loves us infinite, infinitely just the same. Let us clothe ourselves in acts of kindness and justice, but remember whose we are without having done a thing. You are God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, so let the peace of, peace of Christ rule in your hearts, and let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. God put on flesh, so that flesh could put on God. Amen.